they basically hired fucking recon to take out the teams of mortarmen that were shooting and launching mortars into Camp Fallujah, the Mech, and into Abigrab. So we started conducting missions out of Abigrab prison, uh, and we're haunting fucking mortar teams. And we definitely got some as a unit. So it was, it was a wild fucking time. Isn't this around the time that you received uh, you your actions? You got awarded the Silver Star for your actions around this time frame? Yeah, uh, April 7th. Um, uh, yeah, obviously remember the day clearly. Um, we were going to go. There was an ammo supply point west, southwest of Fallujah called the Rock ASP. Blackwater was there protecting this massive ammo supply point. And we were going to conduct operations out of there. So we were going to drive from the Met camp to camp uh, to the rock ammo supply point. And we've been there before, but we were going to do like a week or two missions out of there. And we got hit really hard on the way there. We got hit actually before the big tick that that day was famous for. It was, I remember driving over the Euphrates and taking mortars, our unit, Bravo Company, and second platoon taking fucking mortars, <laughs> enemy mortars in the river, like fucking Vietnam style, dude, like 30 foot plumes of fucking water, like off the right flanks, we're driving across. It, and I'm just like, holy shit, man. Simultaneously started taking PKM, RPK fire uh, across on our basically our 45 to our 11 o'clock. They picked my own B to go drive down that road and engage those guys. So five of us, six of us to go engage this fucking machine gun nest. And we got down there right right there and dudes didn't close with. They fucking bounced. We didn't get any secondary engagement with those guys. So we turned back around, linked back up with you know the main body of our patrol of five vehicles. Uh, you know, made a right, then made a left. And this is where it turns. I remember seeing like a gas station and uh, there was like, 30 to 50 males with all their backs up against the, 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 view, uh, the building, but all of them were kind of facing our direction of travel. They were looking at us and not one of them looked our direction. Um, in that place later, once you process all this shit, this is all happening in real time. That's where like demeanor hit seeing these guys, not one of them were fucking looking at us. So right after that, our, uh, our captain and platoon, uh, Commander, always get Marsock and recon. Our verbiage with team leader, team chief, platoon sergeant, platoon leader, confused. Because uh, we changed to Marsock. But uh, our platoon commander, uh, Captain Brent Morrell, over the hooks, like, yo, let's conduct five and 25s, which for everyone listening, that's vehicle slows down, driver, gunner stays in, dismounts, uh, get out. And we're going to basically get out in layman's term, just walk around and look for fucking IDs and just get out of the vehicle just in case something cooks off to where we can fucking fight. Mm -hmm. So we were all down, fucking been sitting in this stupid hot fucking truck forever. So we got out, walked. Short time after that, we walked 100, 200 meters, fucking circle back up, get in the VIX and push. And very clear in my mind this moment, um, I was behind the driver's seat on the left side of the vehicle and dude on the 50 cal team leader Baptiste up in the uh, driver's seat, a calm, calm uh, staffer to the right. It was a generation kill guy too. Most of us were still from the generation kill platoon minus a few new guys. And, uh, I remember looking over the fucking right shoulder, just happened to be looking forward. Now I had an M16 A4 with an ACOG. I was like the DM and, uh, had it sticking out the fucking window, but I looked straight ahead. And at that same moment, since we were like kind of herringbone left and right with dispersion and, and being offset, I got to see the first vehicle, you know, it's up four or 500 meters. And at that moment, that exact second, I watched it get hit by, I thought was an IED and it rocks completely to the left and black and it's not a fucking movie explosion of flames. It just rocked this thing almost at a 45 in my mind. And just black and brown fucking dust blows out the right side. And right at the same time, over the net, contact right, contact right. And I remember like looking at the trees and like slow motion. Then I remember seeing all this dust being kicked up to our front and to our right behind a berm. And I'm like, 
So this fight's now kicking off. I'm like, it's not that windy out. And this has happened in seconds. Mm-hmm. I remember like looking around, is it that windy? And I look back again and I look to the right of where that dust and see muzzle flashes from the burn, which at the same time was the fourth vehicle. The fifth vehicle was our platoon Sergeant Dan Griego. He's like L shape, right? Last two vehicles, peel right, Bravo element, peel right. And we just so happen to be right at the right moment at this fucking uh, dirt entrance to this field. We make a right. Now we're forming a fucking L shape, like one of the best fucking maneuvers that you can be against a static enemy. And we train to our, to we're fucking blue in the face with the same scenario with fucking rocks, a little army man. Like we've gone through this thing a billion fucking times. And here it is. He calls it like a fucking coach in a football team, dude. Love the dude for this moment. He fucking arose to this occasion. Make a right. Dismount. He's actually recording. He was at an open back Humvee. And he had a fucking 50 cal Barrett on the scissor mount. <laughs> and he was fucking plugging dudes with this fucking 50 cal, man. And he, <laughs> I've listened to the audio. You, you hear me running up to him. Let us go, Gunny. I like wanted to charge all these motherfuckers. So what I saw leading up to this point was there was another like creek canal and a burn. We had like crawled up there to get eyes on and we could see all these machine gun positions for like a kilometer, dude. And there were like five, five guys in each hyper focused on the X, not one of them covering fucking tail and Charlie, all of them being untrained fucks. We're getting it with RPKs. They had fucking serviced, uh, they had missile launchers. I say sevens. They had fucking, they were fucking loaded to the teeth, dude. They were waiting for an American convoy to come by. And I'm like screaming at Gunny to let us go. And he's like, stay here for a bit. And uh, like I wanted to get some rights. He's like, stay here, get on the berm again and fucking start, start engaging. So with my M16A4 and some dudes next to me, I think Stafford was next to me. I uh, started plugging dudes in the fucking back at like maybe 150, 200 meters. He's got wind. You know, there's enemy behind him. Some of them started running 90 degrees to the right. And it was, you know, Kentucky wind, man. There's no time to adjust. So I'm seeing rounds impact in this field. I just fucking aim, you know, lead them. So, so it smoked quite a few fucking people there. We all did. At that point, Kenny's like, move up. Get in your vehicle, your vehicle, uh, move up and move forward. So we move forward. I think past the first group of fucking guys, there was another entrance to break in the berm. So we got back on the MSR, make a right and uh, flip a bitch, basically point the gun back at the heavy gun uh, back towards the fucking road, kind of the north. And Stafford and I go south back to where we were initially were. So we're going back the way we came. And then Baptista uh, went solo, <laughs> fucking by himself this way. Left two guys on the fucking on the vehicle and uh, went with Stafford, dude, and uh, fucking cleared a bunch of dudes up close and personal. Just the two of us had a grenade pulled. Um, one of the guys that I shot, uh, I'll never forget this. It was like the second or third dude I shot it was on his left side. Stafford was up on the berm, and I had this green giant open field to my left. And I was so petrified. I'll never forget how I felt in this moment. I, I just I wasn't enough. I was just by myself. I wish I had 80 guns and 80, 80 eyes. This field was massive. I knew I saw a lot of guys running into that fucking field. I know there's dudes in this fucking field laying down, bleeding out the cell of AKs. So luckily not on shot. But uh, this dude I thought was dead. I get up to him. Stafford's. A little bit further, he's basically at the feet. I'm kind of my toes are touching this guy's back. He's laying on his left side, and I'm like still looking at his eyes. He's fucking eyes are closed, you know. I'm like looking at the right side of his face, right, right on top of him. And I'm looking at this field, and then at the same time, I hear Stafford to my right yell, "He's got a grenade! He's got a grenade!" Right when I said that, dude wasn't dead. Dude pulled this Russian pineapple grenade and fucking dropped it, and I was just like what the fuck? And it was like such a surreal time stopped. And I just like, I've been, I've watched every fucking movie there is. I'm like, this shit's happening. So like, I fucking turn around and start running. I just start laughing because it's like so surreal. And so there's this giant fight going on. I'm like laughing because I'm like, this can't be happening. 
And this fucking thing goes off, dude. And we turn back around, we make it, you know, maybe 10 feet and it went off. He absorbed all of it. Bloom in half. His feet were blown back up the berm. He's like zombie fucking crawling with like his intestines hanging out, dude. Oh, he's still fuck. alive. Yeah, he's still alive. I don't know how the fuck he lived through that blast alone, the concussion of it, but he's we like we learned we learned later that a lot of them were like on a cot slash like like fucking meth like fucking upper mm-hmm. which which makes sense in this scenario because i just couldn't imagine someone living through that in half like a zombie dude stafford fucking lights him up we push the vehicle at this point a fucking cobra is like hovering over the fucking road like damn near you could touch its skids and like launching tow missiles into this fucking building that all these dudes squirted to i mean this is like a fucking movie bro and I'm like looking at the pilots and they're like, yeah, it's like fucking launching, <laughs> launching shows. I ended up fast forward two minutes later, I ended up tripping over a, the same tow wire land right next to a dead Iraqi wearing a combatant, wearing American U S army BDUs with a, an American fucking M4 203 with an aim point. Oh, wow. So, Baptista, like I said, moved up through here uh, and smoked a bunch of dudes by himself. And that was one of them. And I landed an inch from this dude's face. His fucking teeth were exposed. He was dead. But he had a catastrophic malfunction with the M4. I didn't know how to clear it. And that's when Baptista dropped him. So me being me, grabbed the M4. And in a quick second, mate, like, I need to find out who this is. Ripped off the fucking name tape real quick, the knife. Cause it wasn't Velcro back then on the army anyway. Maybe it was Velcro. I thought I cut it off, whatever. And grabbed the gun, slinged it on my back and kept pushing and smoked some more guys. There's bodies everywhere. Linked back up to the vehicle. We'll fast forward to the end of this dude. Um, support platoon comes a QRF and uh, we get escorted back to uh, the base and uh the weirdest thing ever i don't understand why we did this but i'll be very blunt about it i mean in this moment we're fucking vikings i mean this this isn't you know i'm not here to fucking shake hands and kiss babies like it, it's i'm gonna end everyone and anyone to get the fuck home and they're gonna do the same to us so they can get home like dude mm-hmm. it's, it's the ultimate chess game so gunny makes us pick up all these dead bodies and throw these bodies on the hoods of our, our trucks like they're deer don't understand. So we took like 15, 20 bodies back through the X back to the mech camp and holding a dead human being's hands, especially the enemy. It was such a surreal moment, man. Like we're like, like you throw your sister or a cousin on a bed. Yeah. We're doing, we're doing this with these bodies and we put them on the fucking hood and drive back through it all. The, The same people that were, like giving us a stare, we're like fucking just staring at us even harder now with these enemy that they knew were there and they've been laying there for fucking god knows how long. Like we we fucking won this this moment. We fucking won. We're, That's we're, intense, we're going, dude. Rolling back home. through town with bodies stacked up on the fucking hood, Jesus. Basically, a big fuck you to everyone in that area. That's and, intense for sure. Well, the worst part was is from my recollection. The and I'm just gonna be graphic about it again. You know, uh, war and, and fighting is is the ultimate failure of fucking communication. You know, like exhaust that communication until you have to go kinetic, and hopefully we don't, man. Like I'm, I'm almost like a fucking pacifist now. Yeah. But That's looking right. back, looking back then, I'm gonna fucking club fight, bite, scratch my the fuck way out of it to get home, and so are they. So. I got these bodies on the hood and they the blood up like has not coagulated yet. And their noses are fucking smashing on this hood over fucking 30 kilometers. Blood is all over the fucking window. The fucking windshield wipers don't work. So I'm driving. I got the fucking fuck the window down, dude. And fucking blood is like all over my fucking face. Like super fucked up, man. I probably got hep fucking z That's what i was just thinking like damn dude <laughs> to that is Arlen, unsanitary man. sir not cool it's what was it try- like what was it like when you cruise back into base what were everybody else thinking like even the americans were probably like what the fuck 
my friend that I've not yet met in person, you asked the right question. So we make a ride off of Route Mobile or, or Michigan. I like fucking always get confused. I think it was Mobile at that time. I always get confused with Bad Dad and all my deployments. Uh, we make a right, and it's the last straight away to the Met Camp, and it's split on left and right side of two different fobs. There's a bunch of Marines in the prone in this berm facing basically Fallujah, which is off in the distance, and they're in a tick. Mm -hmm. like they're in a fight, like fucking with no idea. So we drive through that shit. We got these hoods covered in blood and bodies of obvious combatants. And this, I never forget this fucking Marine, dude. On the saw, he like looks back, his fucking helmet, and he's just like, and he stands up and he's like, fuck yeah. <laughs> fuck and yeah. like, and they're getting it, but like three or four of them were like, America, this is metal as fuck. Dude, it was, it was, hard man you know and i'm not a callous person dude especially the older i've gotten like i understand the importance of human life but in this moment as a fucking warrior it is exactly what the fuck it is and if you guys don't understand i give a fuck well but i mean it, it's not like it's not like these were just regular joes out there that you just smoked these were combatants you know it's, it's, gonna, be, it was it's gonna be hard to feel bad for combatants that were trying to kill you you know you know, but there's the utmost respect for them, too, at the same time. Truly. Like, they, they're ponying up to fucking fight for their land, their motherland against this invader. Like, I've, I've had ample time to think about this. Mm -hmm. I do not hate. I, honestly, I don't think I've hated any one of them. You know, you you're, not the you first, have, you're not the first Iraq veteran that said that to me before, actually. They said that they understand why they fought us, you know? Yeah, I do. Because I was, I, if I would have been born and raised there, I'd have been fucking throwing rocks and sticks at us too, a hundred percent. I'd have been a fucking freedom fighting son of a bitch. It's time and fucking place. I didn't choose it; it just happened. So I respect them honestly more than a lot of fucks in our own country. Like, How I would much, I'd much rather break bread and hang out with them in a peaceful setting than a lot of fuckers in our own country because they, they rogered up, dude. They ponied the fuck up to a fight. Let's talk about something very, very important. Uh, so the glory, the fighting, life lost, you know, but let's circle back to, we make it back to base, back to base from that big fight. I knew the first vehicle got hit. Didn't know E4 corporal was not a, an ATL team lead was not on the net hearing major comms going on. You know, it was team internal and no idea what the fuck happened. I know there was helos all over the fucking place. Cobras, I think of 46 or Chinook. I don't know shit, dude. Mm -hmm. We get back to base. Fucking KBR, Filipina chicks, fucking that serves food, comes out of the fucking Porta John and sees all these bodies all over the fucking hood, instantly starts projectile vomiting everywhere. Uh, and we're driving through like Fobbit land now, dude. A lot of these people never leave this fucking wire and we're bringing it to their fucking doorstep. And I'm sure it haunts them to this day, man. It's a pretty catastrophic thing to see. So we dump, I d we dump all these fucking bodies about nipple high and about 10 feet wide of fucking flesh in front of the BAS, the, the, the aid station. And I walk inside covered in blood. And they're like, what's wrong with you? And I'm like, oh, no, I'm good, man. Like, my gunny told me to give you this. And then it was two Air Force chicks, nurses, and they came out and started puking. They saw all these bodies, instantly started puking. And they're just like what the fuck? So they go get their MO, their medical, we had a medical officer. And he's like, get these fucking things out of here. What the fuck are you doing? I'm like, dude, Gunny told me to do it. I don't know. Yeah. Corporal so, don't know. It's Corporal don't know. So we grab all these bodies, put them back in this trailer, drive them back to our base across the street, literally across the street, put them in a new pile. We're eating chow on the hood with this, there's blood everywhere. I got a hot plate. We're just fucking eating. Like, I didn't even wash you. We're eating right there. There's a picture of it too, which is fucking mind boggling. So our whole command, everyone's out there, you know, and then we get into basically a school circle from our uh, company commander. I forgot his name. You know, fucking Stan, Neil sit. And uh, our commander says, gives us a 411 of what actually happened at a high level. So did not know that my captain platoon commander was shot in the chest and he died in flight on the way out. Had no idea that our captain was shot killed. Eddie Wright took an RPG, that RPG. Uh, he had made half doors. They had a M249 saw, Parasaw, like soft style saw, short barrel, short stock. 
he was getting it on the tripod on the fucking scissor mount, fucking laying waste. And he took a direct hit to the gun for the RPG. Damn near blew the jaw off. Damn near fucking bled out of the fucking his leg. Blew his arms off instantly. Uh, everyone in the vehicle gets fucked up from that RPG. So that whole time we were fighting, I had no idea. Dudes were fighting for their fucking life on that X. Because mm-hmm. um, they were four vehicles up, three vehicles up. Uh, had me like hundreds of meters a different fight different war mine was going on back here i had no fucking idea a few hundred meters away that my boys were fucking i mean i wish i'd in hindsight i'd have been fucking running on foot and fucking capping all these dudes in the back of the head it's crazy it's crazy how it's that much different only a few hundred meters ahead of you you know yeah i had no idea it happened the whole way home i'm feeling fucking good it was like shooting fish in a barrel i'm like that was fucking easy like, bring it, bitches. That no idea dudes were fighting for their fucking life and lost their life. So, 